Section one of Sappho, a new rendering. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Libby Gone. Sappho, a new rendering. By Sappho and Ovid. Translated by Henry de Vere Stackpool. Introduction and Foreword. One. Sappho lies remote from us, beyond the fashions and the ages, beyond sight, almost beyond the wing of thought, in the world's extremest youth. To thrill the imagination with the vast measure of time between the world of Sappho and the world of the Great War, it is quite useless to express it in years. One must express it in eons, just as astronomers dealing with sidereal distances think not in miles, but in light-years. Between us and Sappho lie the Roman Empire and the Age of Christ, and beyond the cross the Age of Athenian culture, culminating in the white flower of the Acropolis. Had she travelled, she might have visited Nineveh before its destruction by Cyaxares, or watched the Phoenicians set sail on their African voyage at the command of Nekos. She might have spoken with Draco and Jeremiah the prophet, and the father of Guatemala, the father of Buddhism. For her, the historical past, which is the background of all thought, held little but echoes, voices, and the forms of gods, and the immediate present little but Lesbos and the Aegean Sea, whose waters had been broken by the first trireme only a hundred and fifty years before her birth. 2. Men call her the greatest lyric poet that the world has known, basing their judgment on the few perfect fragments that remain of her song. But her voice is more than the voice of a lyric poet. It is the voice of a world that has been, of a freshness and beauty that will never be again, and to give that voice a last touch of charm remains the fact that it comes to us as an echo. For of Sappho's poetry, not a single vestige remains that does not come to us reflected in the form of a quotation from the works of some admirer, someone captured by her beauty or her wisdom or the splendor of her verse, or someone like Herodian or Apollonius, the sophist of Alexandria, who takes it to exhibit the aeolic use of words or accentuation, or Hephaestion, to give an example of her choriambic tetrameters. Only one complete poem comes to us, the hymn to Aphrodite, quoted by Dionysus of Helicarnassus, and one almost complete, the ode to Anactoria, quoted by Longinus. All other quotations are fragments, a few lines, a few words, a word, the merest traces. What fate gave us the shipping lists of Homer, yet denied us Sappho, reserved the lexicon Graecum Iliadis et Odysseae of Apollonius, yet cut the song to Anactoria short, and reduced the song of the orchard to three lines, or decided that sophists and grammarians, exhibiting dry as dust truths, should be a medium between her and us. Some say that her works were burned at Constantinople or at Rome by the Christians, and what we know of the early Christians lends color to the statement. Some that they were burned by the Byzantine emperors, and the poems of Gregory Nazianzen circulated in their place. But whatever fate, it failed in its evil intention. Sappho remains, eternal as Sirius, and it is doubtful if her charm and her hold upon the world would have been strengthened by the full preservation of her work. As it is, added to the longing which all great art inspires, we have the longing inspired by suggestion. That lovely figure belonging to the feet she shows us, crossed by a broidered strap of Lydian work, would it have been as beautiful unveiled as imagined? Did she long for maidenhood? Why did the swallow trouble her? And what did the daughter of Cyprus say to her in a dream? There is not a fragment of Sappho that is not surrounded in the mind of the reader by the rainbow of suggestion. Just as the gods draped the human form to give desire imagination, so perhaps some god, and no fate, has all but hidden the mind of Sappho. 3. Looking at it in another way, one might fancy that all the demons of malignity and destruction had conspired to destroy and traduce to destroy the works and traduce the character of the poet. 
The game of defamation was begun in Athens in the age of corruption by lepers, and carried on through the succeeding ages by their kind, till Welker came with his torch and showed these gibbering ghosts standing on nothing and with nothing in their hands. Colonel Muir tried to put Welker's torch out and only burned his fingers. Comparetti snuffed it, only to make it burn the brighter. But bright or dim, the torch has only intended to show the lepers. Zappho shines by her own light in the minutest fragments of her that remain, fragments whose deathless energy, like the energy of radium, has vivified literature in all ages and times. 4. The mind of Zappho runs through all literature like a spangled thread. Forward. Tear the red rose to pieces if you will. The soul that is the rose you may not kill. Destroy the page you may, but not the eternal words that share eternal life with flowers and birds. At the least words of Zappho, let them fall. Cast where you will, some bird will rise and call. Some flower unfold in some forsaken spot, Hill hyacinth, or blue forget-me-not. End of section one. Section two of Zappho, a new rendering, by Zappho and Ovid. Translated by Henry de Vere Stackpole. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Libby Gone. Fragments 1 through 10. 1. Hymn to Aphrodite. Daughter of Zeus and immortal, Aphrodite, serene weaver of spells, at thy portal hear me and slay not, O queen. As in the past, hither to me from thy far palace of gold, drawn by the doves that o'erflew me, come as thou camest of old. Swiftly thy flock bore thee hither, smiling as I turned to thee, spoke thou across the blue weather, Zappho, why callest thou me? Zappho, what beauty disdains thee? Zappho, who wrongest thy heart? Zappho, what evil now pains thee? Whence sped the dart? Flies from thee, soon shall she follow, turns from thee, soon she shall love. Seeking thee swift as the swallow, Ingrate, though now she may prove. Come, once again release me, Join with my fire thy fire, Freed from the torments that seize me, Give me, O queen, my desire. 2. Ode to Anactoria That man, whoever he may be, Who sits a while to gaze on thee, Hearing thy lovely laugh, thy speech, Throned with the gods, he seems to me. For when a moment to mine eyes thy form discloses, Silently I stand consumed with fires That rise like flames around a sacrifice. Sight have I none, bells out of tune Ring in mine ears, my tongue lies dumb, Paler than grass in later June, Yet daring all, to thee I come. 3. Where blooms the myrtle? O muse, upon thy golden throne, Far in azure, fair, alone, Sing what Tian sweetly sang, The Tian sage whose lineage sprang Where blooms the myrtle in the gay land Of fair women, far away. 4. I loved thee. I loved thee, Athos, Once, once, long ago. 5. Invocation Goddess of Cyprus, come where thy beauty lights the way, and serve in cups of gold these lips with nectar, mixed by love with all delights of golden days and dusk of amorous nights. 6. Cleus I have a daughter, Cleus fair, poised like a golden flower in the air, Lydian treasures her limbs outshine, Cleus, beloved one, Cleus mine. 7. To a Swallow Pandian's daughter, O fair swallow, Why dost thou weary me? Where should I follow? 8. Love 
sweet mother, at the idle loom I lean, Weary with longing for the boy that still remains a dream of loveliness, To fill my soul, my life, at Aphrodite's will. 9. Wedding Song Workmen lift high the beams of the roof, Hymenaeus. Like Ares from the sky comes the groom to the bride, Hymenaeus. Then man who must die stands he taller in pride, Hymenaeus. 10. Evening Children astray to their mothers and goats to the herd, sheep to the shepherd, through twilight the wings of the bird, all things that morning has scattered with fingers of gold, all things thou bringest, O evening, at last to the fold. End of section 2《Section 2 Section 3 of Zappho, A New Rendering by Zappho and Ovid Translated by Henry de Vere Stackpole This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Libby Gone Fragments 11 through 20 11. Maidenhood Maidenhood, maidenhood, where hast thou gone from me? Whither, O slain? I shall return to thee, I who have gone from thee, never again. 12. Moonlight The stars around the fair moon fade against the night. When gazing full she fills the glade and spreads the seas with silvery light. 13. Orchard Song Cool murmur of water through applewood troughs without number the whole orchard fills, whilst the leaves lend their music to slumber. 14. Dika With flowers fair adorn thy lustrous hair, Dika. Amidst thy locks sweet blossoms twine. With thy soft hands, for so a maiden stands accepted of the gods, whose eyes divine are turned away from her, though fair as may, she waits, but round whose locks no flowers shine. 15. Grace What country maiden charms thy heart, however fair, however sweet, who has not learned by gracious art to draw her dress around her feet? 16. As on the hills as on the hills the shepherds trample the hyacinth down, Staining the earth with darkness, there where a flower has blown. 17. To Athos Hateful my face is to thee, Hateful to thee beyond speaking, Athos, Who flies from me like a white bird Andromeda seeking. 18. As wind upon the mountain oaks, as wind upon the mountain oaks in storm, So Eros shakes my soul, my life, my form. 19. Goodness He who is fair is good to look upon. He who is good is fair, though youth be gone. 20. The Fisherman's Tomb Over the fisher Pelagon, Meniscus his father sent, the oar worn by the wave, the trap and the fishing net, for all men and forever memorials there to be of the luckless life of the fisher, the laborer of the sea. End of section three. Section four of Zappho, a new rendering by Zappho and Ovid, translated by Henry de Vere Stackpole. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Libby Gone. Fragments 21 through 30. 21. Timas. This is the dust of Timas, who unwed passed hence to Proserpina's house of gloom. In mourning all her sorrowing playmates shed their curls and cast the tribute on her tomb. 22. Dead shalt thou lie. 
dead shalt thou lie forever and forgotten for whom the flowers of song have never bloomed a wanderer amidst the unbegotten in hades house a shadow i entombed twenty three death death is an evil for the gods choose breath had death been good the gods had chosen death twenty four alcaeus and zappho alcaeus sweet violet weaving zappho whose soft smile my tongue should free lo i would speak but shame holds me the while i gaze on thee sappho hadst thou but felt desire of noble things hadst not thy tongue proposed to speak no good thy words had not been destitute of wings nor shame thine eyes subdued twenty five the altar then the full globed moon arose and there the women stood as round an altar fair. Twenty-six. The Altar. And thus at times in Crete the women there circle in dance around the altar fair, in measured movement, treading as they pass with tender feet the soft bloom of the grass. Twenty-seven. Love. All delicacy unto me is lovely, and for me, O oh love, thy wings are as the midday fire, thy splendor as the sun above. 28. Like the sweet apple. Like the sweet apple that reddens at the end of the bough, far end of the bough, left by the gatherers swaying. Forgotten, so thou. Nay, not forgotten, ungotten, ungathered, till now. 29. Prophecy. Methinks hereafter, in some later spring, Echo will bear to men the songs we sing. 30. For thee. For thee unto the altar I will lead a white goat To the altar by the sea, And there, where waves advance and waves recede, A full libation will I pour for thee. End of section 4section 5 of Zappho a new rendering by Zappho and Ovid translated by Henry Devere Stackpool this librivox recording is in the public domain recording by Libby Gone fragments 31 to 40 31 friend friend face me so and raise unto my face thy face unto mine eyes thy gaze unto my soul its grace 32. The moon has set. The moon has set beyond the seas, And vanished are the Pleiades. Half the long weary night has gone. Time passes, yet I lie alone. 33. The sky. I think not with these two white arms To touch the blue. 34. To her lyre. Singing, O shell divine, Let now thy voice be mine. 35. Never on any maiden. Never on any maiden the golden sun shall shine. Never on any maiden whose wisdom matches thine. 36. Unnamed. I spoke with Aphrodite in a dream. 37. Anger. When anger stirs thy breast, speak not at all, for words once spoken rest beyond recall. 38. Adonis. Ah, for Adonis, where the willows sigh, the call still comes through spring's sweet mystery. 39. Leda. They say, neath leaf and blossom, Leda found in the gloom an egg, white as her bosom, under an iris bloom. 40. 
the captive. Now love has bound me, trembling hands and feet. O oh, love so fatal, love so bitter sweet. End of section five. Section six of Zappho, a new rendering by Zappho and Ovid, translated by Henry de Vere Stackpole. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Libby Gawn. Fragments 41 to 53. 41. Invocation. Come to me, O ye graces, delicate, tender, fair. Come from your heavenly places, muses with golden hair. 42. Youth and age. If love thou hast for me, not hate, arise and find a younger mate, for I no longer will abide where youth and age lie side by side. 43. Fragment From heaven returning, red of hue, his clammies burning against the blue. 44. The Lesbian Singer Upstanding as the lesbian singer stands, Above the singers of all other lands. 45. On the tomb of a priestess of Artemis. Voiceless I speak, and from the tomb reply Unto Ethiopia, Leto's child, Was I vowed by the daughter of Hermocleides, Who was the son of Saonides. O virgin queen, unto my prayer incline, Bless him, and cast thy blessing on our line. 46. To a Bride Bride, around whom the rosy loves are flying, Sweet image of the Cyprian undying, The bed awaits thee. Go, and with him lying, Give the groom thy sweetness, softly sighing. May Hesperus in gladness pass before thee, And Hera on the silver throne bend o'er thee. 47. Hermes Ambrosia there was mixed, and from his station Hermes the bowl for waiting gods outpoured. Then raised they all their cups and made oblation, blessing the bridegroom by the bride adored. 48. Adonis Tender Adonis stricken is lying. What, Cytheria, now can we do? Beat your breasts, maidens, Adonis is dying, Rending your garments, the white fragments strew. 49. Sleep With eyes of darkness, the sleep of night. 50. Thy form is lovely. Thy form is lovely, and thine eyes are honeyed. O'er thy face the pale clear light of love lies like a veil. Bidding thee rise with outstretched hands, Before thee Aphrodite stands. 51. The Bridegroom Joy born of marriage thou provest, Bridegroom thrice blessed, Holding the maiden thou lovest, Clasped to thy breast. 52. Regret Those unto whom I have given, These have my heart most riven. 53. Fragment Upon thy girlfriend's white and tender breast Sleep thou, and on her bosom find thy rest. End of section 6 Section 7 of Zappho, A New Rendering by Zappho and Ovid Translated by Henry de Vere Stackpole this LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Libby Gone. Zappho to Phaon, a new rendering of Ovid's heroic epistle 15. 1. Phaon, most lovely, closest to my heart, can your dear eyes forget, or must I stand confessed in name, beloved that thou art, lost to my touch and in another land? Zappho now calls thee, Lyre and lyric music forgotten, And the tears born of her wrongs blinding her eyes, Upturned but to refuse Phoebus, The fountain of all joyous songs. I burn, 
as when in swiftness past the byres flame takes the corn borne by the winds that blow for what are etna's flames to my desires thou who by etna wanderest o oh, thou the lyric muse has turned as i from her peace peace alone can join us once again the blue sea in its solitude lies fair but desolate i turn from it in pain no more the girls of lesbos move my heart my blameless love for them is now no more but my love for thee all loves depart cold wanderer thou upon a distant shore o oh, thou art lovely wert thou garbed like him apollo by thy side a shade would be garlands thy tresses with the ivy dim and bacchus would be less himself by thee apollo yet who bent as bacchus fell one to the cretan one to daphne's fire beside me what are they i cast my spell o'er seas and land the music of my lyre echoes across the world where mortals dwell renders the earth in tune with my desire alceus strikes olympus with his song boldly and wild his music finds its star unto the human does my voice belong and aphrodite smiles on me from far have i no charms has genius lost her touch to turn simplicity to beauty's zone? Am I so small, whose towering height is such in the world of men, I stand alone? Yea, I am brown, an Ethiopian's face turned Perseus from his path, a flame of fire. White doves or dark, which hath the finer grace? Are they not equal, netted by desire? If by no charm except thine own sweet charm thou canst be moved, Ah, then, alas, for me! Fires of the earth thy coldness will not warm, And Phaon's self must Phaon's lover be. Yet once, ah, once, forgetful of the world, You lay engirdled by this world of mine, Those nights remain. Be earth to darkness hurled, Deathless as passion's ecstasy divine. My songs around you were the only birds, my voice the only music in your fire with kisses burning yet you killed my words and found my kisses sweeter than desire i filled you with delight when close embraced in the last act of love i gave you heaven and yet again delirious as we faced and yet again till in exhaustion even love's self hath died and nothing more remained but earth and life hath lost and heaven gained and now, Sicilian girls, O oh heart of mine, why was I born so far from Sicily? Sicilian girls, unto thy words incline. Beware of smiles, of insincerity. Beware the words that once belonged to me, the fruits of passion and the seeds of grief. O oh, Cyprian, by the fair Sicilian sea, Sappho now calls thee, turn to her relief. Shall fortune still pursue me, luckless one, with hounds of woe pursue me down the years? Sorrow was mine since first I saw the sun. The ashes of my parents knew my tears. My brother cast the gifts of life away for one unworthy of all gifts but gold. Grief follows grief, and on this woeful day an infant daughter in my arms I hold. Fates, what more can ye do, what more essay? Phaon, ah, yes, he is the last, I know. The first, the all, the grave that once was gay, The dark veil o'er my purple robe ye throw. My curls no more are curls, Nor scents the air with perfume from the flowers Egyptians grow. The gold that bound these locks of mine so fair Has parted for the wind these locks to blow. All arts of love were mine when he was by whose son is now the son of Sicily. Phaon, when I was born, the mystic three called Aphrodite on my birth to gaze, and then the Cyprian, turning, called on thee to be my fate and fill my dreams and days. Thou, for whose sake Aurora's eyes might turn from Cephalus, or Cynthia give thee sleep, pouring oblivion from night's marble urn, bidding Endymion to watch thy sheep, Lo, as I write, I weep, and naught appears but love half veiled by broken words and tears. You, you who left me without kiss or tear or word, to murmur softly like a child, begotten of thy voice, 
Deception were less cruel far than silence. You who smiled falsely so often, had you no false phrase? You who so often had false tales to tell? No voice there, at the parting of our ways, to say, Farewell, O love, or just farewell. I had no gift to give you when you passed, And wrongs were all the gifts received from thee. I had no words to tell you at last but these, Forgo not life, forget not me. And when I heard, told by some casual tongue, That thou wert gone, grief turned me then to stone. Voiceless I stood, as though I ne'er had sung, Pulseless and lost, forevermore alone. Without a sigh, without a tear to shed, Grief held me, grief who has no word to say. Then, rising as one rises from the dead, My soul broke forth as one breaks forth to slay, Rending and wounding all this frame of mine, Cursing the gods, the moments, and the years, Now in the clouds of storm where lightnings shine, Uplifted, then resolving into tears. Debased when turns my brother in his scorn, My grief to laughter, pointing to my child, Till madness takes me as the fire the corn, And in reviling thee I stand reviled. Ah, but at night, at night I turn to thee. In dreams our limbs are joined flame with flame, In dreams again your arms are girdling me, I taste your soul in joys I blush to name. Ah, but the day that follows on the night, The emptiness that drives me to the plain, To seek those spots that knew my lost delight, The grotto that shall shield us not again. Here lies the grass we pressed in deeds of love, Lips, limbs entwined. I kiss the ground to-day. The herbs lie withered, and the birds that move are songless, And the very trees are grey. Night takes the day and falls upon the groves, The nightingale alone is left to cry, Lamenting in the song that sorrow loves, To Tyrius she calls, to Phaon I. 2. There is a spring, through whose cool water Shows the sand like silver, clear as seen through air. There is a spring above whose mirror Grows a lotus like a grove in flower fair. Here, as I lay in tears, a spirit stood, born of water. Then she called to me, Zapho, pursuing love, by grief pursued. Zapho, beside the blue Lucadian, there stands a rock, and there above the caves whose wandering echoes reach Apollo's fane, down leaping to the blue and breaking waves, lovers find sleep, nor dream of love again. Deucalion here found ease from Pyrrha's scorn. Zapho arise, and where the sharp cliffs fall, Thy body that had better not been born, Cast to the waves, the blue, blue waves that call. I rise, and weeping silently I go. My fear is great, my love is greater still. Better oblivion than the love I know. Kinder than Phaon's is the blue wave's will. Ye favouring breezes, guard me on this day. Love, let your pinions waft me o'er the sea, Where, lovely Phoebus, on thy shrine I'll lay my lyre, With this inscription unto thee. Zapho to Phoebus consecrates her lyre, Unto the god the gift, the fire to fire. 3. Alas, and woe is me, but must I go? O oh, Phaon, Phoebus' self to me is less than Phaon. Will you cast me down below, All broken for the cruel rocks to press, This breast that loved thee, ruined? Ah, the song, born of the muses, leaves me, And the lyre is voiceless, They no more to me belong, And in this darkness dies the heavenly fire. Farewell, ye girls of Lesbos, fare ye well, no more the groves shall answer to my song. No more these hands shall wake the lyre to tell of love, of life. To Phaon they belong, and he has fled. O oh, loveliness, return, make once again my soul to sing in joy. Feed once again this heart with fires that burn. Gods, can no prayers avail but to destroy? 
No songs bring back the lost, no sighs recall The lost that was my love, my life, my all. Return, return, raise to the winds thy sail, Across the sea bring back to me the years. Eros shall lend thee the favouring gale, The track is sure where Aphrodite steers. Let thy white sail be lifted on the rim of sky That marks the dark dividing seas. Failing that far-off sail, Remain the dim blue depths where once Deucalion found release. Failing that far-off sail, the waves shall give death or forgetfulness whilst I live. End of section 7 End of Zappho, a new rendering, by Zappho and Ovid. Translated by Henry de Vere Stackpole.